and it's yeah and you, you mentioned boundaries then um, that there's so many ways that I could take that I mean with the whole podcast on just trauma alone yeah um, and what it's labelled as and what you was labelled as and because you could have been given a name as depressed you could I mean and I'm sure you was at some point yeah yeah um, again you're okay but something I can certainly resonate with as well that you touched on was sitting with, alone with your thoughts yeah um, even to this day now I sometimes am guilty of and I'm sure a lot of other people are that are listening if I'm sat alone and it's something I still struggle with as I mentioned that my mind will go 100 miles an hour and then thoughts come back because as I mentioned in the previous podcast that I was previously sectioned for uh, reactive depression mm -hmm. Not I wasn't depressed it was a react something that occurred and it reactively I um, went off the radar but this, there's these labels that I don't necessarily agree with. Mm -hmm. um, but what what was your coping mechanism at the time? Really interesting question because it was different for me than a lot of people. Mm. So the way, and again, coping mechanism without knowing mm. that I was trying to cope. So yeah. growing up, so I, I became very, very religious, very, very spiritual. Um, and the reason I did that, again, it's, it's actually textbook if you look at what trauma does to you because I needed to have black and white. That's the only way I could operate and feel safe in my own brain, is to have black and white. So picking religion, for me it was Christianity, um, and I still consider myself spiritual, I believe in something greater than just us. Um, but picking that and going so hard into that world was my coping mechanism, and it became my family, so I didn't need to be with my own family. I would sacrifice family birthdays and important family things for the sake of being at church. Um, that is where I coped and I kept myself busy and I kept my brain in black and white, this or that, because that's what allowed me to feel safe. Do you still do that now with your business? Um, yes, yeah, I think I do. Although it's harder to, because there isn't a lot of black or white. <laughs> no, I, um, I'm, I'm, we will touch on it. Uh, because I certainly do um, and I think if uh, people are honest with themselves they do as well mm. um, anyone that's had success and failed because that's important failure is important and, and, and you've got to learn from that um, yeah. it's certainly something because I can certainly resonate with what you're saying I've, I've been there yeah. um, not exactly what you've done but certainly been through the process of it but I, I can certainly resonate with yeah, the faults, then going through that, like I say, the process, and yeah, it hit home when you said about that, mm. and, and I just think that it's important to go sit alone with your faults and then 100 miles an hour, and then we've got to, we've got to learn that process of yeah. coping with that. Oh, you do, and I think if, whether you know you're trying to avoid your feelings mm. and your thoughts, or whether you don't know, the behaviour's the same, it's avoidance, mm. and so you will keep yourself super busy mm. or you'll become an experienced junkie like I did and I started travelling the world. Always said that's what I wanted to do and I do love travelling but when you're constantly travelling, constantly, constantly, and I travel so much I gave myself chronic fatigue symptoms because I was trying to escape that much, mm. <laughs> it's not healthy, it's just not. Um, it's also not real life and one of, uh, I don't know if people listening to this podcast like Jordan Peterson but some of the stuff he says I really like and um, one of the things he says is that normal life is not sipping pina coladas by the beach normal life is the day to day and it's a bit mundane but I was so working so hard and probably the thing which attracted me first to trading is I could make money for 30 minutes a day and I could travel the world and be anywhere and so that's what I did, that's what I made happen so I traded for 30 minutes a day and then I would go out and get pissed up in Singapore or get pissed up in Hong Kong or wherever it was that I was in the world. And amazing, amazing times, but only for so long. Yeah. And there's only so long you can try to outrun your well, demons, for lack of a better word, it before is. they catch up with you. And when they caught up with me, my God, did it hit hard. Why? Well, part of the reason my demons caught up with me is because I end up in a relationship um, which was a very toxic one. Again, tick that box for ending up in a toxic relationship when you've had certain things happen to you. And the when that relationship fell apart, well, I ended up... Was, was that because you didn't have boundaries? Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, I didn't. Yes, I didn't have boundaries, but that specifically, I didn't have boundaries or a framework of how someone I'm in an intimate relationship with should treat me. Because I was super Christian, I'd never had an adult sexual relationship. So I was a virgin until I was 26 because I was on this track to only have sex when you're married. And that's, again, that's black and white, that's safety. So I didn't have to ever give my body to someone, which had been prior abused. So I didn't like my own body. I didn't feel like my body was my own. So that was safe because I didn't have to give my body to anybody. Yeah. And so when I kind of realized, well, actually, I'm not going to be waiting until I'm married. And actually, I don't know if my sexuality even aligns with that part of Christianity either it became a very very difficult thing so that's when I end up in a relationship end up in a sexual relationship and when that broke down because I didn't I realized it wasn't a healthy relationship and it dragged on for about three years after that that's when it really hit the fan for me because all my coping mechanisms I've been using for 26 years suddenly were broken because of the, the pain caused by that relationship so all my internal coping mechanisms were now gone, and I had nothing left. So now you have to rebuild. I had to rebuild. And this is why I'm so passionate partly about trading, because if I didn't have trading at that point, I don't know how I would have coped on a financial level. Because I was able to pull myself together for 30 minutes a day, do what I needed to do. Um, I was still able to travel, which allowed me a bit of escapism, but it was good escapism at that point because it got me out of my rut and there was other days where I couldn't get out of bed like genuinely um, I remember I was living in Watford at the time um, uh, flat sharing with a friend of mine and I remember getting into the car park just outside the flat and thinking I was about to have a mental breakdown like to the point I don't know if you've ever been to that point where you think your brain is about to snap and I thankfully it didn't but I was like I'm that close and I was in therapy three times a week at that point but I remember speaking to one of my mentors at the time and he said, and I was moaning about how much I was spending on therapy. He was like, Lewis, what are you moaning about? You obviously need it and you're in a position where you can afford it. I was like, oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> so again, just reframed that, but yeah. Horrible what, what, what sort of therapy was it? So that one was psychotherapy. Okay. I don't really know what that means, to be honest. But <laughs> Well, obviously I, I want to touch on it because it was, like I said, I do know what that means. Um, and when the brain's about to snap, like I say, well, I was actually put into, um, well, I was actually sexually for my own mental health, not anyone else's, but I, I didn't have a clue where I was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> literally, as you said there, yeah. I felt like I was about to just burst. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was reactive, but at the same time, it wasn't healthy for anyone because I was just walking around like a zombie. Yeah. Um, and when you get to the point of burnout, as you mentioned earlier, that's all you can literally do is just keep going and going and going until your body just fails. Yeah. Um, and it's not good for the people around you that love you. No. And it's not. And you just because you can't see a way out. Is you're escaping and yeah. not dealing and coping with with whatever it is. Um, but therapy obviously helped you. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what were some of the things that you learned within within therapy? Oh, it's just, I always have to leave with the same takeaway because I still I still go to therapy not as much I don't need it as much anymore but I still believe in mm. keeping going. Uh, one of the things I always leave with is be kind to yourself. I'm terrible at that. I still am terrible at that. Mm. Um, but be kind to yourself. It's so so important. Um, but beyond just being kind to yourself in terms of like the the well known phrase or whatever. But what does that actually mean? And how does that actually manifest on a on a daily basis in your actions and your activity? So, what I constantly will work myself to the point of exhaustion. That's not being kind to myself. Okay, I may achieve certain things as a result of that, but I think I've become less focused on achieving something ridiculously amazing and all of that. I'd rather be happy and healthy and love the people I'm with. Um, so being kind to myself and realizing what I do today makes an impact tomorrow with my eating habits because my eating habits get very out of hand as well. Again, you, love, you love Chinese? Oh, bloody love Chinese, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, I, I can easily, I mean, yeah, I can easily go three, four times a week for Chinese. I love it, absolutely love it. But it's not healthy. And so you can say, oh, it's self-love, I'm giving myself a treat. Well, no, you're not. You're actually damaging yourself. You're under the guise of self-love. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot of lessons I've had to learn as well. And that's where I think investing is so interesting because it is a form of self-love. Like I'm, I'm putting this away 
for the benefit of the future.